What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video on Buy Sell Cars TV. Today's video is about me buying a 2018 68 Reg Range Rover autobiography from a main dealer that circa cost over 100 grand new for just 290 pound a month with only a 3,000 pound deposit. However, after I had signed and paid a deposit for this car, the dealer has tried to back out and not honor the deal that we had on the table. So listen to this story on how main dealers, but more specifically Marshall Group, are treating their customers when it comes to dealing with sales because it is an interesting one it is an ongoing issue i still want this car but i wanted to share with you how this has been dealt with so stay tuned guys so let's start with how this all came about so it was a tuesday i was just generally looking on the market on auto trader seeing how things are setting at the moment but equally if there are any deals to be had obviously i am interested but i wasn't necessarily actively looking for a car now i came across this range rover it was an autobiography spec 68 reg i liked how it had the two tone with the black and the silver it was a one owner car and it only had done approximately i think 53,000 miles nice spec car overall you know being an autobiography you've got your massage seats leather roof lining nice wheels it's got all the toys you want and it was priced at 30,990 pounds now it's not unusual to see range rovers priced very attractively at the moment you know they're not selling very quickly necessarily insurance problems theft problems all of these things are leading to the demand of these cars being quite low meaning the prices are falling so it is it is normal to see a car priced below market value it wasn't out of the ordinary however because this was a nice spec car priced very well i thought i'm interested so immediately i placed a online 99 pound reservation fee or deposit you want to call it but it's a reservation fee to secure the car for me to go view it so now the first thing i done is i picked up the phone and i gave them a call so i was dealing with volvo in derby but they are part of the marshall group so that's who the car was for sale with and that's who i called i wanted to know the availability of the car i wanted to confirm the price along with a couple other details such as the service history and just get a bit more information on the car now this 99 pound deposit is refundable so if things aren't up to scratch after having that conversation or equally after going to view the car i can get that 99 pound back so i had a quick chat with them confirmed everything made sure the price was the price made sure the car was available and i also got a copy of the service history it was full Land Rover main dealer. So that was obviously a good peace of mind to see that. And as the car was far away, being in Derby about two and a half hours to three hours away, I asked if they could send me a video presentation of the car. So I'll pop that up as a short little clip so you can see where I was at, at the point of wanting to buy this car. Well, great to speak with you earlier. And um, thankfully the rain has stopped. So we've got the car outside. I'm gonna show you around the vehicle inside and out point into uh, a few things that we have on the car for you the car generally is in really really excellent condition um, so just to point out on your first mark was the tires uh, they are not Land Rover however they're all all four brand new tires but generally the condition of the car is fantastic so we're going to walk around the car and see it in a little bit more detail if I do say anything I will show you I'm going to try and beat around the bush with it Round to the driver's side and then a quick look on inside as well we've obviously got the panoramic roof up on the top condition wise I'd say the interior is really well looked after and a quick look at the dashboard as well obviously with this being the autobiography you get the soft closed doors which we can look at in just a second. But just a really nice place to be. There you go, pulls it in. Nice soft close on the doors. Pretty much faultless, I cannot fault the car. Especially being black, it would show pretty much anything you would see on the car. But there we have it. I'll get back to you regarding the service history. But for now, thank you very much and I'll speak to you very soon. Now, the reason I asked for this video presentation rather than going to see the car is because it, it's far away. I'm going to have to take a day off effectively from work to do this. So I wanted to know, is this car worth me doing the journey? Because on a video, you might pick up any little defects. And I did specify, please just let me know if there are any things you do see on the car, just so we're not sort of wasting each other's time. So the video presentation was sent to me. 
had a quick look around it obviously from that and it looks pretty well a few little imperfections i can see i wasn't too happy with the tires the car had on but you know these are small things especially when the car is at an attractive price so at this moment i decided i'm going to arrange to view the car but I will start the process of a finance application with the finance broker. Got some quotes done and I decided to make an application for the finance. Again, reason being because the car is far away. I didn't want to waste a trip, you know, if I can't get a finance deal that I'm happy with, especially at the moment, it might be a bit more tricky to get approved on finance where there's a bit of uncertainty. Also, interest rates are high, so it all depends on your credit rating. But I got an initial quote, 290 odd quid a month with a three grand deposit pretty happy with that i thought that's absolutely fantastic in terms of you know monthlies and deposit for a range rover so i thought why not why don't i just get it on the finance applied for it a couple of hours later got an email to say finance is all approved so happy days now i'm ready to make my trip down to derby and if i'm happy with the car i can commit also it puts me in a position of power when it comes to negotiations because i'm ready to buy there isn't you know i don't need to think about it i'm in a place where if i like the car i can say to them i'm prepared to put a deposit down and you know just get the ball rolling on the car so that's why i've done all that beforehand and even more so i'm buying from a main dealer not just from you know a independent or garage i'm buying from a big brand i'm buying from you know a main dealer volvo they're selling an approved used car but it's owned by Marshall Group, which is a massive, massive company. So I, I had some faith in that respect as well to apply for the finance before seeing the car, because I kind of know when you do buy cars from dealers, you know, they are good at you know sorting small things out if there are any imperfections. So that gave me a bit of confidence, but obviously later on, you're gonna find out why that's all a load of rubbish anyway. So now it's Thursday, I've cleared my day and I've set off to head down to Derby to go view this car. So I've arrived now at Volvo Derby, greeted by the sales exec who was dealing with me, had a quick chat, and then we've gone outside to look at the car, had a quick look around it, and then he gave me the keys. It's a solo test drive, so I just had to sign something on the iPad, took the car for about half an hour test drive, thought I'll just check it over some speed bumps, you know, get it up to speed. I've had a few Range Rovers before in the past, so I know how they drive, I know what to expect, I know what the certain noises or whatever they may mean, but the car drove, very, very nice as expected. You know, one owner and good mileage. Went back to the dealership. I had a good look around it. Noticed some things on the bodywork, such as there was a poor previous repair on the rear passenger side door. It is a used car, so I'm not expecting it to be perfect, but it was something which I would have probably liked to got rectified because it is a nice car. You don't want to have a cheap repair done on it. And then looking through the service history again, the car needed a service in the next two months, I believe it was. so. I had to factor in all of these things. So went back inside, thought, let's start negotiations as I'm happy with the car, but I still want to get a better deal. So upon starting negotiations, I've obviously mentioned all of my points. At this moment in time, I've also met with a business manager. So he's come out to be part of the negotiations. He's explained to me that they priced the car aggressively and that they can't really do much on the price because the car is effectively already priced very, very low which I understand, oh, nice Porsche that. However, there were things on the car which need rectifying, so I was going back and forth, you know, trying to get a deal done. And in the end, I managed to agree that I will get the car serviced and obviously, you know, that poor previous repair is something I'll get done. And I managed to get the car down to 30,500. It's not a massive thing to get off the car, but I understand where they were telling me we've aggressively priced the car because, you know, the Land Rover market's slow which I understood and I was getting a good deal. So I thought, you know what, I'll shake their hand and I'll commit to buying this car. And I just want to add at this point when we were going back and forth with negotiations, the business manager was involved, the sales executive was involved and also the general sales manager was involved. So there were three people involved in the negotiations. And it's really important that you remember that three people were involved in the negotiations because it will make sense later on. So. As I said, shaken hands, agreed on 30,500. I've then been asked to pay an additional 401 pound, uh, totaling my deposit to 500 pounds uh, to commit to the car, secure the car. And at this moment in time, I've signed a, like a purchase order, effectively meaning, you know, the car is now officially sold and they'll start prepping the car. So it's ready for me to collect. The car did smell inside of like um, a wet dog. So completely understandable, it's a usable car, but 
not how I would want to buy a car from a dealer. So I explained, can they get the car validated and get that sorted before I collect the car? And at the same time, the finance company would need to liaise with Volvo to get the payment made for the car. So whilst I was at the dealership, I made sure everyone knew who they're dealing with. So I spoke to my broker, got them to send an email over to Volvo requesting that an invoice is to be sent over. Therefore, would allow the car to be paid for in full, meaning I can collect my car potentially by the Saturday, which we provisionally put in the diary. So that's how we left it. Everything was going perfectly fine. Deal agreed. Planning on picking up the car on a Saturday. Done deal. Heading home now. So now we're moving on to the following day now. So it's Friday morning and obviously I'm excited because I'm going to be picking up my car in another day. So feeling good, planning things, you know, potential road trips with the family. It's a nice, comfortable car. And uh, I received a phone call from Volvo Derby in the morning. And it was not a phone call which I was expecting. So the phone call went something like this. I was told that they cannot sell me the car because they had priced the car incorrectly. Um, they were saying there was a pricing error and that the car should have been 39,990 not 30,990, so 9,000 pound difference in price. Uh, at which point, obviously the first thing I, I wasn't you know, too pleased about this and uh, I went a bit on the defensive, you know, I've given you a deposit, I've received an email, which is an order confirmation, thanking me for my business, congratulations on your new car, the deal is done. How can you now say that they've incorrectly priced the car? So obviously you can understand my frustration in this call. We're going back and forth. I'm being told that they can't sell me this car and I'm trying to say, well, it, the deal was already done, deposits paid. Even if there is a pricing error, you should do the right thing and honor the price. I've made mistakes before in the past where I've sold a car to a customer too cheap. I've realized when it comes to the payment and I've honored the deal. It's my mistake. I shouldn't be making mistakes like that. So I've left that phone call now um, because it's not really going anywhere. And about 10 minutes later, I've received a call from the general sales manager. Now, he goes on to say the same thing and you know how they are sorry that they've made this mistake and they just simply cannot honor this deal. But what they are happy to do is give me my 500 pound deposit back and just cover some of my expenses, such as the fuel money to travel down to Derby not thinking about how I've taken a day off work, not thinking about how I've applied for finance and had a hard search done on my name, not thinking that three people could not double check something properly to make sure the car is priced correctly. It is unacceptable and quite frankly, just the most poor customer experience I've ever seen from a main dealer. How on earth can three people over the period of, you know, starting from the Tuesday, up until the Friday. So you've had, you know, three to four days. How could they not realize the car is priced nine grand below? Even if it is a, you know, a simple mistake, how can they not pick up on this? I probably spent the best part of seven to eight hours traveling to Derby, looking at this car and driving back. And it's a waste of my time because someone or three people can't do their job properly. And you don't expect to see this from a main dealer. And I don't want you to think I'm being sour that, oh, I didn't get this car at a good price. Honestly, it's, it's really not about that. This is about time being wasted. People haven't done their job properly, meaning that I've had to waste my time, do that traveling, apply for finance, have a hard search of my name, which affects my credit score. All of these things are why like, I'm pissed off. I've had Range Rovers before, Vogue's, Sports, so it's not something new to me. It's not something for me to be sour about in that respect. And especially because I'm in the car business, and I pride myself on things like, you know, customer experience and customer service. It winds me up that this has even happened. And as I was saying earlier, I know when I saw the car, it was an attractive price. And a part of me did think this is a very, very good deal, but I didn't question it that much because like I was saying, Range Rovers are simply not selling. In the auctions, they are going super cheap. Dealers are struggling to sell them. So it's quite normal for dealers to sell cars cheap because they need to just offset the cars. You know, some dealers work on a, if they haven't sold the car within three months, for example, they'll just throw it into auction. So if it's approaching that period, they might price the car aggressively to get it gone. And in this case, when I did go view the car, the business manager was saying that we priced it aggressively. So I just didn't batter an eyelid. Even when I called them after putting the reservation fee down to make sure, is the price correct? Can you confirm the price? All of these things were done. 
I received emails throughout the whole process, you know, with an order confirmation. Even beforehand, I received an email, you know, confirming everything with, again, with the price, the deposit received. So that's why I'm disappointed and pissed off about how this whole situation has been dealt with. If it is a case where they have priced the car incorrectly, it is ridiculous that no one picked up on that. But where I've left it at the moment is I've told them I'm going to be seeking legal advice because I've given a deposit now for this car. I've signed, you know, a order form effectively, received an order confirmation. So I am in the process of seeking legal advice on this matter. So that's where I've left it with them at the moment and I've advised them not to sell the car until this matter is resolved. So that's where things stand at the moment. And, you know, some of you might say, well, you know, it's nine grand difference in price. The car's not, they're not selling. They're, the Range Rovers are not selling at the, the retail prices that they're advertised for necessarily. There are a lot of Range Rovers now, you look on the market, miles below the average price. You look at SVR, some of them are like nine grand below the retail value because they're just not selling because insurance is high. People finance cars and then obviously if your insurance is high, you're paying a lot on monthly. So that is why these Range Rovers are cheap. But in the instance where I put the 99 pound deposit down and I'm sat in my office and they called me immediately to let me know, we're really sorry, we've priced the car wrong, we cannot honor the deal. I would have let it go because I would have understood, you know, these things happen, it's a quick mistake. They probably just advertised the car and realized straight away the price is wrong. Fair enough, that's that's fine, you know, that these it happens. But to let it go on for three to four days and then realize after deposit's been paid and signed for, it's not acceptable. It's just not acceptable. You don't expect this from a main dealer. You don't expect this from someone like Marshall Group. So I've left it with them that I'm gonna be seeking legal advice. So let's see what happens. If any of you have any advice for me, just please comment down below and let me know if there is any advice you have. Anything is helpful at this point. It's a nice car. I would still like to buy the car. I, ideally, I don't wanna give them my business, but I like the car. So. If I can get it, great. So if you do have any tips or some you know, guidance for this, please guys, just comment down and let me know. It is an ongoing issue, so this isn't the end. There will be you know, another video afterwards to just let you know and update you how things are going in the processes. At this moment in time, I don't know what's gonna happen. They're adamant they're not gonna sell the car and I'm adamant that I wanna buy the car. So we're gonna have to just see down the legal avenue. Is it worth me you know, going down there or not? So. Stay tuned guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button, like, share this video. I want everyone to know how the Marshall is dealing with customers. So make sure you share the hell out of this video and get it doing the rounds so this can't happen to other people. If you price the car incorrectly and a deposit has been paid, you should honor the deal. It's the right thing to do, in my opinion. So on that note, guys, I'm gonna end today's video here. Don't forget about my 10,000 subscriber giveaway where I'm gonna be giving a free car away to one of you lucky subscribers. So make sure you follow me on Instagram for that and I'll subscribe to the channel and we'll be giving a car away for free once we get to 10K. So make sure you're subscribed for that. But as always, I hope you've enjoyed this one. Thank you so much again for watching and I'm gonna see you on the next one. Take care, guys.